Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys this makeup look. And it's also my first video of the year. So I'm going to be doing a Q&A for you guys. Um, and I've been meaning to do this Q&A for about a month. It's been a while. I am going to be talking a little bit about 2017, but I'm not going to do like a full recap. That's going to be in another video. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to see this makeup look and me talk about how I got it and all of that good stuff and you want information about everything I have on, you can let me know by watching this video. Okay. All right. Bye. Um, so first of all, this sweater is from Zara. This necklace is from Be Happy With Pink, I believe. I think. And this hair... I will be talking about in another video, so stay tuned for that. But this is a frontal, y'all. I am on I am on the frontal game now. I've never tried a frontal, so this is my first time trying a frontal. And it's made by my friend Princess. I will make sure to put all her information in the description box if you guys want details. So, And she's been maintenancing my real hair for a while now. Um, usually she just washes my hair and braids it for me for my under my wigs. But ah, we decided to get a little fancy this time. I'm going to use the Unicorn Essence by Farsali. And I'm going to use the um, Hydrating Primer by Collab Makeup. Faye LH wants to know, what would you be doing if you were not a YouTuber? This is a question I get a lot. And um, it was never meant to be a career. I didn't get on here intending for this to make me money or to be a, to build my own brand or be my own business or none of that, okay? Um, my... My skill sets have allowed me to cultivate a opportunity to build something on this platform, but it was never this platform that cultivated my skill sets. Does that make sense? So honestly, all of the skills and all of the things that I do can be done anywhere. I don't believe that I'm limited to YouTube. I don't believe that, you know, what I do on here is only for this. Um, because I've been editing videos, I've been making videos all my life. If you watch Life of the Logans, I showed a throwback clip of my mom vlogging. Like, my mom used to vlog my life in the 90s. I've been editing and doing stuff on the computer since I was like 12. I've had my own laptop since I was, I believe, 12 or 13 years old. I, I was on the earliest, whatever social media sites were out in the early 2000s, I was on them. So, you know, if I wasn't making videos on YouTube, I'd be doing I'd, be, I'd still be making videos just posting them somewhere else when I quit school and wanted to start my own thing and do my own thing it wasn't to start YouTube I did not quit school to start YouTube I was working three jobs I had my own business I was working retail and um, I was working at an office and I'm still doing all of those things I'm still doing ministry I'm still doing photography and doing makeup and all of that on here and you know, I still do retail because I shop all the time. So <laughs> like, I, I mean, I'm still, all my skills are still there. You know, um, let, me, what, what, let me figure out what foundation I'm about to wear. Hold on a second. I think I'm going to do Huda. I think I'm going to do Huda today. I'm, feeling a, I'm in a Huda mood. What I do on here is what I love. I'm going to put a little smoothing primer on my nose because lately my nose has been looking real porous. I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to put this. This is Makeup Forever Step 1 Smoothing Primer, by the way. I just wanted to clarify because I feel like people think that YouTube is the end of everything. I mean, when people were talking about, they're talking about, you know, net neutrality and all this stuff like that. To be honest, that doesn't scare me. People are like, what are you going to do if you're, what if it affects your job? I mean, I'm not worried about that because I know that my, pur my purpose in life is not to be on YouTube. So I know I'm going to be taken care of. Creative people... Um, I'm going to add a little bit of this glow. This is Bobbi Brown Golden Glow. I actually really like this. I'm going to add some of this to my foundation. Um, but creative people, entrepreneur people, people who know how to get things popping, we will make a way anywhere. And if you're on YouTube, you know that this cannot be your only hustle. I got a new beauty blender. It's really bright. So anyway, moving on. That was a long, long, long. Let me move faster because I'm talking way too much about one thing. Um, what happened with you and Ashley? Are you all still friends? Um, Ashley Devonna, her name used to be Ashley B Beauty, but now she's Ashley Devonna. And I grew up with her. I, I knew her since like 
we were like, what, 10 or 11? Um, 11, I think. We were in middle school, so 11. Um, and we known each other for a long time, and we started YouTube together. Once I got married, things kind of changed, and so we made a whole video about that. If you want to know all about our friendship, you can go watch that video. Um, but back then, we kind of told y'all that we weren't best friends anymore. Um, and I don't know why people don't get that. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Um, what happened? Nothing happened. We just, we're just not friends anymore. Like, that's just it. There was no fight. There was no argument. There was no long, drawn out discussion or anything like that. Like, we just stopped communicating. And I think, I think that's normal for you to grow apart from people and stop communicating. Had we not put all of our friendship on the internet i'm adding some nars to this had we not put our friendship on the internet i don't think people would be asking you know so um i think just because people were used to seeing us together and now they don't they're, they're, they they want to know what happened and i mean you have that's a valid question to ask but nothing happened love drunkle says i've been married for two years now and i'm 24 years old i want to know how you and Cameron manage to keep the love alive and how do you guys get through obstacles when they occur? For those of you who are new to my channel, um, Cameron's my husband. We've been married for four years in February. So um, tomorrow we will be dating for seven years. So we've been together for seven years. How do we keep the love alive? <laughs> like my, my friend Taylor says, bring out the freak of the week. No, but seriously, how do we keep the love alive? Spend time together, we laugh together, we enjoy each other's company, we genuinely like each other. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't have married somebody I didn't like to spend time with. He's just a really good guy. Like, it's not, it's not hard to, like, if you, if it's hard for you to love your spouse, why did you marry them? For what purpose? Like, I need to know. Um, of course, over time, you grow and things change, but not, that, whole, that they don't change completely as a person unless you just ain't paying attention at all. Um, and I think that happens when you guys don't communicate and you don't spend time together. You don't even know that person anymore because y'all ain't spending time together. We find new ways to get to know each other. We talk about everything. Um, you know, it's not, we don't go days on end without talking to each other, even if we're upset or mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, we communicate just like any healthy relationship should be you should be communicating yeah so I don't think it's that hard I think people make it a little bit more difficult than it has to be by making it a burden to enjoy each other when obstacles occur I think that's the perfect time for you guys to grow together um if something goes wrong and regardless of whose fault it is or what happened, I never really get so much in my feelings that I don't let it um, teach me something. And Cam's kind of the same way. So when things happen, we both look at it as a learning experience and not a headache. And if we do get a headache from it, we talk about it. And there's nothing wrong with being vocal about how you feel about something. It's just don't, don't beat each other up, of course, but... I mean, you do want to make sure that you are being vocal about your feelings and things like that. So just talking through it. I think communication is like the most important thing that you can do. We, we me and Cam are actually just doing a Bible plan. Um, and if I can find the name of it, I'll put it in the description box. We're doing a Bible plan and it's talking. it was talking about um, um, confessing your faults to one another. Because um, I think some people forget that when you... If you know you're wrong or if you have a problem and you don't want to talk about it, you, you that's what your spouse is for. You're supposed to tell them about your issues. I'm going to use Sasha Buttercup. Oh, I was using the Tarte Shape Tape. But yeah, you have to be able to talk about things that you don't like to talk about. Um, and that's just the fact of the matter. You cannot go through life holding things in. So talk about them. Um, you know, don't talk just to be heard. And don't listen just to respond, okay? Talk because it's gonna help the both of you and listen because you actually want to understand what they're thinking, you know? Don't just listen so you can have a response. Yeah, but every obstacle me and Cam have been through so far, I am so grateful for it because I feel like it's really helped us to learn each other, learn how each other thinks, and work through a lot of the issues that we didn't know we had. 
So um, there's never been a time where we went through something and I regret it. Tiana Perry says, Cameron was joking about your dad, about how, how your dad was acting when he asked to date you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she said, I thought that tidbit was hilarious. Could you talk about what it was like to join his family? How you two build relationships with each other's friends and family? Did either of you not like get or get along with someone? And how did you handle it? She's talking about, I talked about this in Life of Logan's where Cam went and asked my dad, when, my, when Cam asked my dad if he could date me, and my dad was like the godfather sitting in a chair, and he like spun around in the chair and was like, step into my office. Like that literally happened. My dad is very extra. We did not have any problems with not liking each other's family or friends. My parents knew his parents before I did, so they've always had a good relationship with his parents. Naturally, because my parents like his parents, I've never had a problem with his parents. Um, it was just awkward moving here. I'm used to being around my family all the time. So of course, me getting to know his family and getting used to them. And you know, when I first moved here, it's like, wow, they don't get my jokes. Like they don't get, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's just, we're just different. I grew up in a whole nother state and a whole nother place. I never have had a problem with anyone. Like I've never had like a run in where they disrespected me or, you know, made me feel less than. That's, that's a blessing. Like I said, I, I know not everybody has that story. Um, but because I'm such a huge family person, if I had a problem with Cam's family at any point while we were dating, I would have been like, no. I like family and I like to be able to, for our families to come together and enjoy each other. And if we can't do that, then I don't want you. Um, advice for introverts who want to have friends, especially if you work from home. So I feel your pain. I work from home too. So I know what it's like to be locked up in your house all day and not get much social interaction. Um, so if you want to make friends, um, a lot of a lot of the people that I am cool with go to my church um, or we know them from church um, or they were Cam's friends first. So if you haven't already, kind of get to know the people who know your husband. If he doesn't have a lot of friends, then get to know the people at your church. Pause for a second. I think I want to do a bright eye look. And I don't know. I think I want to do like a hot pink. I have this little Huda Booty, Huda Booty electric palette. And I kind of want to use this. Um, I think the best way for an introvert to make friends is to stop being an introvert and get out, get out of your comfort zone. Um, so there's no change in your comfort zone. So you kind of have to just get out there and make stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing like the past year or so. This is Too Faced Dark Chocolate Soleil, by the way. Like I've been just booking flights to go places or getting the opportunity to go places um, and meet new people. And when I meet new people, I'm not an introvert. I'm extroverting myself. I'll introduce myself, I'll be friendly, and then sometimes I hit it off with people, sometimes I don't, but that's okay. Um, I think you kind of have to like put yourself in the line of fire and just go for it, fam, you know? I'm gonna put on some blush. This is ColourPop Drop of a Hat Super Shock Cheek, and it's a really pretty rose gold. Look at that. Um, and I'm actually gonna use my booty blender. What was the greatest thing that 2017 taught you? 2017 taught me that when you put your mind to something, you can do anything. Last year, I said, this is my slay year. I'm going to slay all year long. And I did it. And I'm very, very proud of myself because I actually did it. And I said I wanted to get out of the house more and do more in-person stuff. I did it. The limits that are on your life, you put them there. Um, I think a lot of people think that they're limited to what they they have like the cards they're dealt if you really want something to happen you're gonna make it happen because you really want it the person who has what you have didn't have that at one point so how did they get it by making it happen they went out and and went after it so don't be mad because somebody wanted something more than you you know this is um rum matchstick um what's this brand fenty you know there's power in your words there's power in prayer there's power in your mindset and what you believe about yourself. And if you think that, you know, you can't do something because you don't have the resources, then you can't do it because you don't have the resources. But if you go out and try to find the resources and figure out how to make it work for you, then now you have some resources and now you can work with that. You know what I'm saying? 
you know, realize how much power you actually have to make change in your life and then like do it. It's like so fulfilling to like actually do something that you wanted to do. Aaliyah Nicole asks, how has YouTube, your YouTube platform changed your life? You know, it's kind of helped me to really like look inwardly and like fix some of my own issues that I've had. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, like it's kind of shown me where I'm weak and I've gotten stronger because I'm, I'm watching myself all the time. So it really helped me to value like my relationships with people in real life and like honor and respect that, you know? Um, and it's really influenced me to be more tangible, to be more open and honest and talking more about my feelings and you know, what I believe in stuff. I can't read your name, but she says, how do you feel now since your optimal health journey? If you don't know, last year I went on an optimal health journey which basically is just a journey to get my body in the best health possible. Prior to then, I was just eating a lot of sugar and not taking care of myself. I was going through a bit of a depressed state um, and, you know, just not, I wasn't taking the best care of myself that I should be mentally, physically, spiritually at all. So um, last year was kind of like the turning point for me. I went to the doctor, got some tests done, and um, all of that's in that video if you want to get more information about exactly what was going on with me um and i will be doing an update i will be doing an update soon so stay tuned for that yeah i feel really good i i think now more than ever i know my body um and i kind of know what works for me and what doesn't i feel great um i don't know if you guys can tell but i look great <laughs> um this is to me i feel like this is the most consistent that i've looked good um, my skin has been really good and my body is you know, not as skinny and scrawny as I used to be. So I am definitely still skinny, of course. I'm not not trying to get thick like I used to want to try to get thick. I'm not trying to get thick, um, but I'm fuller a little bit, you know. So I definitely feel good. I look good and I'm happy. So that's good. But happy is relative. It depends on what I eat. <laughs> How did your parents react, feel about your style and taste in dressing, especially as a PK and a leader in your church. How do you, your husband feel about it? I've seen you wear crop tops, which obviously exposes your midsection and shorts and other risky clothing pieces. The reason I'm asking is because I am much curvier than you are and have been ridiculed and yelled at by elders in my church for wearing something like a pencil skirt to church. I've been kind of jaded ever since. I see that you are so free with your dressing and you have always, and have always wondered how they felt or if you've ever struggled with dressing for church. So for those of you who don't know, now you know, I'm a PK, I'm a preacher's kid, um, and I am also now a preacher's wife. I get, I don't get this question a lot, but I do feel like people often are not taken aback, but kind of just like, oh, like she doesn't just wear long ankle length skirts. I'm, I'm, I guess you could say I am free with how I dress. I'm not, I don't feel restricted, I guess, but I do have, I do have rules and standards for myself. That doesn't mean that I don't, that I wear whatever I want because I definitely don't wear whatever I want. And it's more so based on um, the time and the place. Let me just tell y'all, first of all, really quickly, this, it's my Ray Ray palette though, is life. And if you don't have it, when it comes back in stock, get your hands on it. I'm gonna take the highlight shade. That's what I'm gonna do, and highlight. There's a time and a place for everything. I don't wear crop tops to church. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wear crop tops. And I'm not saying that she's saying that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not gonna wear a crop top to church. I'm not gonna wear a super, super, super tight skirt to church. Like normally, if I'm going to church, I'm not, I don't even wear skirts to church for the most part. Cause I know skirts can be sometimes a little bit even though I know some churches are like, you can't wear pants. I haven't been to a church where you can't wear pants in a long time. I did grow up Church of God in Christ, Kojic. So we were not allowed to wear pants. Um, and like red nail polish and makeup and all that stuff. So I didn't wear makeup until I was 18. Um, and that's just because my parents didn't really let me either. But, um, you know, they just kind of looked down on like that kind of stuff, like big earrings and stuff like that. They kind of were like, you're trying to be a hoochie mama or whatever. Um, but now that I'm older, number one, I'm, I'm grown. So I, I can wear what I want. But 
um, I still, I think it's a matter of respect and being respectful of where you are. I visited Abu Dhabi and I went to the Grand Mosque. I wore a head wrap and I had to put on a whole long dress. I'm not Muslim, so I, I don't have to cover my hair all the time. But when I'm in their place of worship, if I'm visiting just to see it, I'm not gonna walk up in there like, I don't believe this, so I'm just gonna have my hair out. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same with church. Like, But when I leave the house for church, Cam does a, a once over of me. If something looks too see-through, he tells me to go change. He's like, you need to put on something under that. Cam's mom checks me all the time. She's like, do you have on a shell? And I'm like, yes, I have on a tank top under this. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm on vacation, if I'm in 100 degree weather and I'm on the beach or at the pool, I'm wearing a two piece. I'm wearing a crop top. I'm wearing shorts. When I go on vacation with my family, you know, Cam's dad is a bishop and I wear shorts around him. It's not, you know, they're not disrespectful shorts. My booty's not hanging out. I don't wear low cut tops around him, you know, so we can see my titties. Like that's Cam's dad. Why would I look like that around him? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just a matter of di discerning, um, you know, if you feel, if you feel uncomfortable wearing something or you feel like somebody's going to say something to you, don't wear it. The under dark side of my booty, you will never see the underside of my booty. You will never see my nipples. You will never, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't walk around that stuff with that stuff showing. My dad used to get, honestly, my dad never really got mad about my clothes. He more so got mad about like me wearing colored lipstick because he hates the way colored lipstick looks on me. He's like, oh, I hate when you wear the purple, red, and orange, and blue lipstick. It's so ugly. He used to get mad at me when I wear stuff like that, but never really my clothes. How do you keep your faith so strong and connect with God when you have to be on social media? I find it hard to balance being part of cultures such as fashion, music, etc., but also not bending in my faith. Like I've said before, my husband my husband was a huge influence um, in me um, in my relationship with God, and he's always been the the like the person to push me, you know, and make me better. Even like even his sister, like they're both. A huge inspiration to me and how they are so strong in their faith and, and I've always kind of I always admired how even though they're preachers kids that that pressure I guess the pressure to appear to be more more holy than we really are didn't it didn't affect them building their relationship with God like it affected me I feel like well Cam does talk about it but Alexis is just awesome but um I, I had a hard time growing up I always had an issue with what people thought about me um, when I was younger. Um, but now I'm more so just kind of like, this is me. This is what I like. This is who I am. And I don't I don't really let people determine whether or not I can be me. You know what I'm saying? Now, the problem is when the things that you like and the things that you want to do and the people that you hang out with are going to make you compromise. Um, and by compromise, I mean act the fool. And you know what I mean. Just don't put yourself in compromising positions, you know. There's a huge difference between listening to a love song and listening to a filthy song that explicitly talks about what a guy is going to do with you and you don't want to have sex because you're trying to be celibate. Does that make any sense? Like people put themselves in these positions all the time and it's like, girl, okay, if you said you want to be celibate, this is what you said, not me. This is what you said to me. You said you want to be celibate, right? Cool. You want to be celibate. You don't want to have sex with your boyfriend. But you and your boyfriend, Netflix and chilling. You listening to Chris Brown's 45 song album. And he talking about doing this, that, and the third with your little kitty cat. Why would you put yourself in that position? Now you want to do it. You set yourself up. But you said you want to be celibate though. That's what you said. That's what you it. You tell me what you're trying to do because I, to me, it sounds like you're trying to do something. When I was in high school, I had friends who liked to do it. I'm, not, I'm just going to be honest. I had friends who, who did it. So naturally, I wanted to do it because they liked to do it. And they were telling me about how good it was. Um, but I also had these morals and I wanted to be a virgin until I was married. So it was, it was, I was battling with myself and I'm like, dang, why do I feel like this? Oh, I know. It's because all my friends are having sex and they're talking about having sex and they're watching movies about having sex. And it's, it's just like, you're setting yourself up. It's harder to balance when you are trying to be something that you're not, or you're trying to be like other people. I'm going to do this pretty color right here. 
I, I really just want to like put this all over my eye. Can I do that? Will I like it? Probably not. But I'm going to try it. If you're set apart, you're set apart. If you're like everybody else, you're like everybody else. Pick one. It is what it is. And here's the thing. I don't sit on the computer all day and just watch other people live their lives. Um, you know, I don't even really watch YouTube like that anymore because like I just, I, I like to live my life and not feel pressured to do what everyone else is doing. So get around people who are doing what you want to do, living their life the way you want to live. Like, you just have to like set yourself up for success. And I feel like I'm going to regret putting this pink eyeshadow on, but I'm going to keep going because I've committed. And at this point, I can't turn back. So I have to commit now. <laughs> the next question is, how do you go about buying a home and planning a wedding at the same time? I don't know because I didn't do that. Um, but if you want budgeting tips for a wedding, I have a video about that. Um, I don't, I don't have any advice videos for buying a house, but I'm going to do one eventually. Um, once I get all my facts straight, honestly, I don't really remember the process of buying a home because it went by so quickly and we had a really good realtor who was a family friend. So, um, it was kind of easy because he talked us through the entire process. It's more so based on your credit. So get your credit together. So the next house we get, I will definitely document the process. Um, so that I can kind of give you all some tips. But I think people get the impression that buying a home is like really, really, I mean, it depends on what kind of home you want. Obviously, if it's out of your, if it's out of your budget or your price range, then yeah, it's going to be really hard. But um, it's not really as hard as people think it is. How to plan a reasonable trip getaway. I actually have a blog post, which um, I haven't made a blog post, a blog post in like five ever. But I promise you guys, one of these days, I'm going to get back on my get back on my um, blogging game. I just last year got preoccupied and I did it. I didn't continue. But um, yeah, I made a blog post about how to plan a trip. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description box. What advice would you give your younger self after all you've been through and seeing God do in your life? Man, I would definitely tell my younger self to prepare more for adulthood. Like, learn learn about taxes. Learn about how to write a check. Learn about, you know, finances and all that stuff. Like, take that stuff seriously and, and take the time out to learn it. Don't be ashamed of who you are and where you come from. Growing up, I was one of the only kids who had, a parent, who had two parents. Um, most people only grew up with one parent. And they, they, they looked at me as if I was weird or I was lucky or whatever. And it made me feel bad. Like I, like I would say things to people and they were like, they would be like, oh, you don't get it. Cause you haven't went through what we went through. So you won't, you don't understand. Like I had friends who wouldn't tell me things or they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't open up to me about stuff because they felt like I wouldn't understand because I had two parents and I'm like, and then, you know, growing up, I was always bullied about, I because I talked white. I wasn't, you know, like everybody else or whatever. Either I was not black enough or I was too black. So it's just, I don't know. It, I was always trying to make people comfortable, I think. And I, I, I would tell myself now, I would tell myself, you ain't got to make nobody comfortable. Be yourself. Be you. If they want to be around you, they will. And if they don't, they won't. And I would also advise my younger self, get to know God for yourself. Don't rely on your parents' prayers and your parents' relationship with God because that's not your relationship. Get it early. Get it while you can. Make a habit of it because trying to make a habit of reading your Bible and talking to God and stuff as an adult, like it's harder to get used to that when you already set and waking up and doing what you want to do and just going throughout your day. You know what I'm saying? It's much easier to learn those habits while you're young. So that's what I always tell like our youth at the church. I'm like, y'all, we're not hounding on you because, you know, we've been doing it perfect our whole lives. We just want y'all to get it now. So by the time you're an adult, you ain't struggling like the rest of us, okay? Do you see yourself doing YouTube for a long time or expanding into other branches of entertainment or the beauty industry? The way that the world works now, it's hard for me to say that I can, that I can see myself doing something forever only because YouTube is so new 
I didn't have a plan for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I never planned um, to do this. So it wasn't, it's not like I have a idea of when it'll stop being a lucrative business. But I do know that I am going to branch out into other things. I've already started branching out into other things. I'm doing more in-person stuff, like I said. So um, that's my plan. That's my goal. So I do want to do that. But other than that, I don't really know what else I'm going to do. This is a bomb mascara. This is the Troublemaker Mascara. Um, and it's by Urban Decay. I love this mascara. It smells like it's strong. And it is strong. It definitely holds up. I cried a lot yesterday and it definitely held up. I really shouldn't have done this pink eyeshadow because now I can't film another video because I'm gonna have the same eyeshadow look in the video. <laughs> um, How do you stay positive and not have a complete emotional breakdown through really rough times? Plot twist, I do have an emotional breakdown. Anytime I've gone through something extremely emotional, I have a breakdown. But I think the key is to allow yourself to be vulnerable and have a moment of weakness without it affecting your day to day, like, or affecting your relationships or whatever. I think a lot of times we get so caught up in how we feel that we let it affect everything around us. I think there's a healthy way to be vocal and to share your thoughts and your feelings without hurting others. Make sure that you surround yourself with people who are positive, who can keep you uplifted and encouraged and can slap you in the face and tell you to get it together. Um, I, want, I want a little glitter, so I'm gonna put some of this silver, or should I do gold? But yeah, keeping good people around you who can keep you balanced. This is the, I don't know what lashes these are. I believe they're your lash bar of Moscow Mule, I wanna say. So any tough situation, Look at it as an opportunity for you to learn something, to learn yourself, and to better yourself. So for my lips, I'm going to do something nude. I was going to do, I have the new Fenty lipsticks, and I was going to do a new Fenty lipstick, but since I went ham with this pink eyeshadow, I don't want to do something too cray. Two hours later. So the video cut off before I finished. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but on my lips, I have this stuff. I have ColourPop lip pencil in the color Chi. Fenty Beauty's new lipstick, and this is the color Up To No Good. It's a peachy nude color. Very pretty. And then I have on top of that, because I cannot stop wearing gloss, um, Fenty Beauty's gloss in the color Space Suit. And this is like an iridescent goldish pinky color. But I think someone asked me what was my goals for 2018. And I'm going to be making a video all about my goals for 2018. I want to consistently make content that I say I'm going to make. I want to actually stick to what I say I'm going to do. That's my goal for the year for YouTube is just to stick to the plan. I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it and execute and finish it. Because there's a lot of unfinished business that I had on YouTube last year. I said I was going to do a ton of different videos that I never did. So anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will talk to you guys in my next video.